Hello and welcome to Exponential Knowledge. The goal of this channel is to compound knowledge one book at a time, seeking exponential growth. In today's video, I'm going to review A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. This is the first book in the Song of Ice and Fire series. I will be reviewing all five of the books in the series in preparation for the release of the sixth book, The Winds of Winter, so be sure to subscribe to the channel. Alright, let's get started. First off, I just want to start by saying that this is definitely one of my favorite fantasy series of all time. It is right up there with the Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter, and it will keep you on the edge of your seat from beginning to end. In fact, one of this book's strengths is the pacing. I have read this book multiple times. I have also listened to the audiobooks as well as watched a TV series based on the books. On this reading, despite knowing the story inside and out, I still felt compelled to continue flipping pages from chapter to chapter, and I often found myself unable to put the book down because of how engaging the plot is. In this book, Martin has created a rich and complex world full of intricate political intrigue, bloody battles, and larger-than-life characters that are both deeply flawed and deeply human. The story follows a group of noble families as they fight for control of the Iron Throne and the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros. At the heart of the story is a power struggle between the Honorable Stark family and the Ruthless Lannisters, but there are many other factions at play as well, each with their own agendas and motivations. The main thing that sets A Game of Thrones apart from other fantasy series is its unflinching graphic depiction of violence and betrayal. Martin doesn't shy away from showing the ugly side of human nature, and he isn't afraid to kill off major characters, which keeps the tension high throughout the series. In my opinion, the addition of violence and other graphic scenes was a major innovation in the fantasy genre. J.R. Tolkien may not have approved, but it has sold a lot of books. Another standout aspect of the series is Martin's world building. I love the geography of Westeros. From the architecture of King's Landing, to the stunning depictions of the Vale of Arryn, to the more creative elements like the 700-foot ice wall, it is just an enjoyable world to explore with the imagination. The Seven Kingdoms of Westeros feels like a living, breathing place, and the various cultures and customs of each region are fully fleshed out. For example, the culinary descriptions tie in with the geography of each culture in creative ways, and the dialogue and languages used by the characters are also very authentic, adding to the immersive experience of reading the books. The excellent world building is also complemented by extremely entertaining characters. One of the things I love about this book is that no character is completely good or completely evil. Each has their own agendas and their actions and decisions have consequences that ripple throughout the story. For example, Tyrion is my personal favorite character. He is extremely witty and intelligent and you can tell that George R. R. Martin enjoyed writing Tyrion chapters, especially early on in the series. I especially enjoyed Tyrion's talk with Jon Snow about why he reads so much, as well as his speech in the Eyrie. However, Tyrion is also not a great guy, as evidenced by his shooting of his own father with a crossbow bolt. Another great example is Littlefinger. Littlefinger is objectively not a great guy. However, Littlefinger has some of the best lines of the first book, and his wit and humor are legendary. On this reread, something else I noticed was the general depth of George R. R. Martin's writing throughout the series. As I mentioned earlier, I have read this book several times. Each time that I read through the series, I pick up something new. For example, this was the first time that I noticed that the Ned Stark character literally begins to melt after traveling south to King's Landing, which has a hotter climate than the frozen north, as Littlefinger suggests he might. Upon arriving in King's Landing, Littlefinger quips that the heat does not suit the Starks, who are rumored to be made of ice and melt south of the neck. After each subsequent council meeting, Ned becomes more and more rattled psychologically, slowly unraveling, or melting. After one council meeting, just before the hand's tourney, Ned notes that he is getting chafed raw by the Red Keep and that he yearns for the cool days and cool nights of the North. Ned's psychological frustrations are paired with constant de descriptions of the character dripping with sweat constantly removing soaked clothes, and pouring cold water over his face as if in an attempt to preserve his frozen state. To add to the analogy, Ned's sword was named Ice, and it was also melted down by Tywin Lannister after traveling south of the Neck. 
The excessive depth and detail put into the writing of A Game of Thrones makes this a book and a series that was written to reward rereads. Overall, A Game of Thrones is a must read for any fan of fantasy or epic storytelling. It's a thrilling journey through a vivid world that will stay with you long after you finish the final page. It has not dethroned The Lord of the Rings as the King of Fantasy, but it was a valiant attempt by George R. R. Martin, and I highly recommend it if you have not read it already. What do you think? Have you read A Game of Thrones? If you have, let me know in the comments below and let me know how you thought the books compared to the TV series. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel as I will have several more reviews and video essays coming out over the next several weeks. Thanks for watching everybody.